Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva for platforms such as Merch by Amazon, Etsy, Amazon Seller Central, eBay, Redbubble, and many more. So if that's something that you're interested in, please stick around, okay? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about phone cases. So this is just one example of a phone case that you could make using Canva. Um, the mock-up is also done in Canva too, so you can make the case, you can make the mock-up, all of that. Um, but this is right here, just a random pattern design you can do. You can do photo designs. And so I'm gonna kind of go over how you can go about making you know, cool uh, phone cases that will sell. So if that is something that you're interested in learning about, go ahead and stick around. Okay. So we are going to be starting with a different size than we usually do. We are gonna be creating a uh, phone case specifically for an iPhone. Now there's a caveat, every phone size is a little bit different, um, which can be frustrating when you go to design for them because, you know, the iPhone 10 is not the same size as the iPhone 13 is not the same size as the mini is not the same size as the any of the other models. Um, so you'll want to get as close to a size that will work on all of them um, because you don't necessarily want to have to recreate your design for every single size. So right now I have pulled up a file um, this is the mock-up size for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, and so this one will show where the cutout is. I picked this one because it's got a really big cutout and that is something that you need to be aware of if you're designing phone cases. If you put an image on it, you don't want any important part of the image to be where this cutout is. This is where the cameras would be. And so I'll show you, but you have to be very cognizant of where this lies and where the rest of your image falls. So um, for this design, um, the closest I came up with in terms of sizes that I like to design on is this is, uh, let's see, 1575 pixels by 3200 pixels. So that is the size that I am um, designing on. So again, that is 1575 and 3200 pixels. Um, and I'm just gonna start here. Now, when it comes to phone cases, I like to do either patterns look really good or photos look really good. Um, so I'll show you examples of both of those. And I like to get a good wide variety. So for example, it's summer, you might go with some tropical photos. Um, I like to do animals. Sometimes people will search for their favorite animal. So let's go ahead and say we want some sea turtles because it's summer, sea turtles are a popular animal. So we'll just come up here to elements. I've already kind of done a search for sea turtle and filtered by photos. And so now what you're looking for is a photo that will look good in this vertical orientation and it's gonna have to be cropped pretty narrow. You also have to make sure that none of the important elements are in this top corner. So you might have to search a little bit to find photos that work best for you. Sometimes I'll try out a few different photos and you know, really see what looks good, what doesn't look good. Um, and I'll give you an example here. This is a good vertical photo, right? And this one might work out okay if I bring it all the way down to the corner and I pull it all the way up right here. You can see it's kind of cropping off the back end of the turtle. I can move it over. Now it's gonna crop out his face a little bit more, so it really does have to be pretty narrow. And again, if I was to send this to back, we can see it actually looks good. This isn't cropping off any part of the turtle's head. It's just not quite as narrow as I would like it to be in terms of the photo. I'm gonna be cutting off part of the turtle, but that's, you know, that might be acceptable, depends on the photo. So you can just keep looking for things that you like, things that, that work well. Um, once you find them, then there you go. You've got a nice phone case. So I'll spend a lot of time looking and I'll create several different cases for different um, different niches. And so, you know, there's some really beautiful pictures that you can look through. And of course on Canva, you can, you know, there's photos of everything that you're, you're able to use. And so that's really nice. Um, 
they do like it when you can do something to change the photo so you can always use some of your photo effects on here to change the contrast the saturation you can put some filters on it if you want to just to really like make it your own here's another one this is a wide one but the turtle was so small that I can do this move it up a little bit I can send that one. Oh, there it is on the back and so now you can see that might actually work if I take my my little uh, template off move it out to the side you can see that this actually looks like it might be nice you've got the water you've got the turtle you've got the sky it fits nicely in the frame nothing important will be being will be cropped out so this might be a good a good option I can always again play with the colors of the photo if I want to come up to edit image I can play with the brightness, saturation, contrast. I can put some filters on it. So there's a lot of different ways that you could kind of change the photo to sort of make it your own. Um, photogenic is probably one of the easier ways because you can just throw a filter on it and kind of whatever looks good. So that's gonna make it quite a bit brighter. And so you can see a lot of different ways we can go with this. I like some of the vivid ones, um, makes it kind of bright. And so again, you can just play around. There's definitely some really weird ones here if you wanted to do that. There's this poster one here, that's kind of cool. It looks like it almost took the, the blue out of the water. Now that's really transparent. But anyways, you can see how there's a lot of different ways that you can play with all of these. Let's say that I wanna keep it pretty close to how it was. So I'll just do that, hit apply. You know, that might count. A, you know just fine as making it your own you could always add text to it if you wanted to if you wanted to make personalized phone cases you could add somebody's name if you have an etsy shop you can offer personalized phone cases so you could put something up with an image and then offer you know to incorporate somebody's name or or word or date or anything within the phone case and you know that's another way that you can kind of personalize things so this is one way that I like to go with phone cases, and that is just with a regular photo. The other way would be with some sort of a pattern. So again, patterns can be pretty easy. Lots of different ways you could go with patterns. If I just search for pattern, you can see there's a lot of different weird textures. You could go with a rock texture. Some of those look good. Some of the abstract things, rainbows. Um, there's like the kind of marble grain marble is pretty popular so there's a lot of different marble typed designs animal prints so there's a lot of different ways you can go with just general patterns for phone cases and those tend to be pretty easy you don't usually have to worry about cutting anything off if you just do a pattern and so there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can go with the patterns plaids can be popular again some tropical designs um, if you want to do animals, flowers, you know, some of the basic ones. Um, one of the ones I like is, an, uh, I think it's called alcohol ink. Alcohol ink. Yeah. And so these give you some of those really cool um, patterns that you've probably seen on phones or it also works great if you were doing any kind of cover. So like the laptop cases or iPad cases you know, anything where you want to get that kind of pattern to it, you know, that these patterns work really well. So here's like a popular one. If I was to turn it this way, 90, and I can pull this out here and you could see how I could easily go ahead and make that some backwards, really cool phone cover. And there you go, it's not gonna cut anything off when I cut that out, it's just gonna look really good. And so that can be a really cool phone cover in and of itself. And this actually lends itself very well to, to image, um, you know, to, to filters and whatnot because you can really play with how much you wanna saturate it if you want it really bright, you know, if you wanna bring down the saturation. So you can really play a lot with these. You can play with the contrast and the brightness and. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of make this your own. And again, lots of different filters you could put on some of the, if you want more of a pinkish filter, that one looks good. Rosie looks good, whimsical, that's gonna fade it out a little bit. 
solar is really going to make it pop. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can go with these. There you go to make a really cool phone case using different kinds of patterns. So phone cases are offered on Merch by Amazon. And again, if you used uh, Printful or Printify integration with shops like Etsy or, or um, Amazon Seller Central or eBay, those would all work. Um, Redbubble, they do phone cases as well. And so you can always do designs like these for Redbubble. Um, this type of design works really good on their phone cases, their laptop pouches. It can look good on pillows. It can look good on blankets because it's just an abstract pattern. So these are some things that you can look through if you haven't taken the time on Canva to look through all of these different pattern designs that you can do. There's a lot of really cool ones. So I would encourage you to really take your time and come up with some great designs and, and try to find ways to make them your own or, or add personalization to them or whatnot. So this is just another really good sort of um, design style that's different than just t-shirts. So I know we do a lot of t-shirts, but they're there's a lot of different things on print on demand other than just t-shirts. So I want you to be able to branch out to embroidery, to phone cases, to mugs, to blankets, to, to you know, all the different products out there. The more products you have, the better chances you have of making a sale. The more platforms you're on, obviously the better, the more designs you have, the better. So you really want to take up as much online space as you can with as many products and as diverse of a portfolio as you're able to. And that's really going to help your sales and help you make some extra money. So I hope you found this useful. It's a pretty simple, quick tutorial. Um, but again, I hope you can start incorporating this right away and I hope to see you next time. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.